some of the top college football programs make over $200 million in revenue a year um, with up to nearly $50 million in profit from ticket sales alone um, after expenses that they have to pay for for the university, like staffing and stuff like that. Um, but what about the players? They don't get any money at all from the revenue that they generate. Um, and the schools like to use a world-class education as a good example. This is why I, like, I believe college athletes should be paid for their contributions to the university and the amount of money that they generate for those schools in the NCAA. Um, why they haven't been paid, why they should be paid, and how the schools can afford it are some of the things I want to go over in trying to uh, shed light on the situation and why they haven't been paid at all. Um, and so the first point, you know, college athletics have been around for over a century making billions of dollars in revenue a year. Um, for the school and the, you know, the NCAA, but, and not a penny of it has gone to the students at all um, that generate those profits. Um, and so, like I said, some of the schools like to use a world-class education as, as a, uh, a substitute for not paying their um, uh, students. Um, but best highlighted by Steve Delson from ESPN, where he speaks about a situation with a basketball player called Rashawn McCants from UNC. Um, he actually says, you know, that in order for them to participate in athletic program, they need to maintain a 2.0 GPA, which isn't too difficult to uh, maintain um, from any of the majoring programs. And for specifically, you know, Rashawn McCann's situation, he attended African American Studies, which is a program commonly used by student athletes because of how easy it is um, for, you know, to, for, the, for, t for them to technically be student athletes, right? Um, they use this program because of how easy it is and, you know, the hectic schedule that they have to follow. They can't really spend too much time on harder classes, I guess you could say, um, and other programs. So they, they always choose African-American studies as uh, what, what they want to major in because, you know, they still want to participate in school and stuff like that. Um, and then Rashawn McCann's situation was more of a controversy where he had people helping him do stuff like that. Um, but you see this happen in many other schools as well where the African-American studies is always largely populated by uh, student athletes um, and then the second main point I want to go over is um, how or why they should be paid um, and you know the main thing to look at here is that these student athletes go through so much work that they have to do in one day um, and it's a 15 hour day schedule that they have to go through and nine of it nine of the hours goes towards the, uh, again this is you know best highlighted by Andy Hutchins at Alligator Army where he looked at University of Florida and these football players at Florida um, had a 15 hour day and like I said, 90 of the hours goes towards the football program and only six of, about six of the hours goes towards schooling. Um, and so if they're getting a world-class education, um, I think they're gonna need to spend more than six hours in order to achieve that education and actually get something from it. Um, so it kind of just shows, you know, world-class education is not a viable excuse. And again, they're putting in 15 hours a day just at the school alone. I feel like they should be paid, you know, some sort of money for what they're doing. Um, and then another thing to look at is that these players are also risking great injury to their bodies and their mental health um, for the rest of their lives when they're playing these sports, especially football. Um, and the, the University of Pennsylvania, their at-risk article, it says right here that um, the atmosphere now is decidedly different given the growing evidence that head injury can lead to deteriorating brain diseases like Parkinson's. So like I said, um, you know, some of these athletes, they can get paralyzed on the field, some can get hit in the head over and over again and then it could lead to Parkinson's and stuff like that so it's it's not like they're you know playing a you know simple sport and again they're not getting paid for risking their body at all um, which you know doesn't seem right to me um, and then the third point is how the schools can afford it like I said you know a lot of schools they go they send people to look at ticket sales um, as a revenue and how you know they're not actually getting that much but the schools make money in so many different ways um, and then they try to spend that, mo that money as quick as possible. So then they say, oh, we don't have any money. Um, and so one of the, there's two main ways that they like to spend a lot of money. One is paying coaches, um, specifically at Duke basketball or from, excuse me, from Huffington Bo Post, Max Strachan um, spoke to Stefan Zeminski, who's a sports uh, econom economist. And they looked at Coach K, who's the head coach, uh, basketball coach at Duke. Um, he's getting paid $10 million a year um, just for coaching this basketball team. And so um, Stefan actually said here, in a world in which student athletes are paid, coaches will likely be compensated less for their recruiting abilities. So that means coaches like Coach K will receive less than $10 million a year, which I think he can afford. 
Um, I think you can afford at least $5 million a year, which, you know, that the rest of that $5 million could go towards paying some of these athletes that I think deserve to be paid. Um, and another thing that I see a lot, being a fan of University of Florida, specifically their football program, is the state-of-the-art technology facilities that they have for the teams. Um, and the University of Oregon, uh, excuse me, from Brad uh, Crawford from 247 Sports, looked at the University of Oregon specifically, where they spent uh, upwards of $68 million a year um, on their facilities, and it includes things like marble shower floors, Ferrari leather seats, its own barber shop, and the students themselves get outfitted um, in Jordan brand shoes every year, several times, stuff like that. It's just unnecessary. You don't need to spend that much money on these kind of crazy things when that can go towards the students themselves. I mean, getting paid for what they do. Um, and so, you know, I hope I've enlightened you on why these athletes haven't been paid, why they should be paid, and how schools can afford them. And I just want, I, you know, leaving this speech. I want you to put your mind into the body of one of these student athletes for a week, go through what they have to go through for a week, and just keep in mind that entire time, you're not getting paid a single penny at all.